Hi everybody, this is Maria Clark at Sweet Willow Designs and welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to start a series of uh, Valentine's Day projects and we'll start with the sweet little uh, micro dotted Valentine's Day necklace. The materials we'll use are, I'm going to actually use, this is one of those drill bits, um, some wood hearts, gloss enamel paints, chalk paint, and my regular dotting supplies. I'll also be using some chain, jump rings, and a clasp. I'm going to be using these wood um, hearts cutouts. They're one and a half and 1.7 inches. Um, I'm going to use the, the 1.5 for this particular project. I do sand them. They're a little bit rough. So I, I give them a nice sanding, kind of smooth the edge a little bit. You can, in, uh, instead of using just regular sandpaper, you could use uh, like the nail buffers. I get sometimes them at the Dollar Tree and um, they're just in the nail section and they're those little square uh, uh, buffing um, sponges. I will cut some holes in these. I'm going to drill some holes. I have this hand drill that you've seen me use before, but you can also use uh, uh, a little hand, uh, you know, manual hand drill. And I mark where I want to put my holes. And I'm putting the holes in before I do any kind of background painting because I don't want any of the natural color wood to show. So I want to be sure all surfaces are painted. So I'll go ahead and get my holes cut. And this is the um, Deco Art Americana uh, chalk paint that I like because it has a nice matte finish. One thing I want to say about these hearts is they're really soft wood, so they do warp. You can either gesso them or put several coats of uh, the chalk paint on. I probably have about three coats of chalk paint, and they warp slightly. So, you know, do one side, turn them over, do the other side, and it tends to straighten them out. I do want to make a little marking template, and so I'm just going to uh, trace and then cut out a little template here um, so that I can mark the center of my of my hearts and that way I'm get a good uh, starting point here. Um, I'm going to trim it so that it's a, it's uh, perfectly sized. And then I can take it and just fold it to find the center. So I'm going to fold it down the middle to find the center and then I'm going to fold it not in half. I'm going to take the tip of that and I'm going to push it up a little bit so that it sort of, you can see how it sort of matches the curve. And that way I know I'm kind of getting it in the center there. And then I'll uh, place my fold there. And then I can easily mark these just by placing the template on. And um, I just don't have good luck with eyeballing it. Maybe some of you guys are better at that, but I just, I just have trouble with it. So I like to at least get the center point um, so I know that um, I've just got a good foundation to start with. So I will get those marked and we're ready to start. So I'm using a true red and white, and I'm just using a little bit of that red in the white to make a, a pink. You could, of course, use any colors that you like. This first pattern is going to be um, a swirl pattern, and I'm using that little drill bit. I think this is about a three millimeter um, drill bit, and then I'm going to be just using my nail dotting tools uh, because this is really micro dotting, so I don't need big tools for this. There's such a small piece. and um, the way to get this started is you've got your center dot and then you've got your four and I'm using two colors here just because it's easy to see how that works but get my four um, cross uh, cross points for the first color and then come in with my second color and then see how to start making the spiral you can't really see the spiral yet but you can see that I'm putting the same color dot in between um, the uh, the uh, previous row and I got a little splitch there, which will come out in the wash here. So don't, it's annoying me, but don't worry about it too much. I, um, for the rows, I'm going to be using the same dotting tool for a couple of rows. And I'm just going to add additional paint to make the dot slightly larger. I don't want to go up too fast um, because it doesn't, then you don't really get the spiral look if you, if you go up in size in your dotting tool too fast. So I just add a little extra paint to make those dots a little bit bigger. Now you can start to see the dot or the spiral forming and we'll just keep adding rows of paint. I'm going to speed this up for you a little bit. You can see that I'm using different sizes of my nail dotters. I have that little five piece nail dotter set, which I just love and they're really inexpensive. Um, for the products that I like to use, I do have my affiliate links down below. I really appreciate you using those. It really helps me um, maintain my channel and, um, you know, I get a, um, a little commission from Amazon. It doesn't cost you any more, but 
it does give me a little bit um, to help me bring videos to you. So uh, check those out. But these nail daughters, you can find lots of different places. So you can see that the swirl is starting and I'll just keep going up in size. Now I'm going to use that um, drill bit. I'm not sure I'm in love with these drill bits yet. I'm going to do a little video on tools, um, but I thought I would try it. So we'll just keep going around um, and continue to fill in the, um, the dots to get that spiral going. And now I'm going to move up to my smallest crochet hook uh, so I can start to get a little bit bigger dot here. I'll move up to that in just a minute. You can see how easy it is to learn this particular spiral with just two colors. And then when you're a little more confident in it, uh, cause it does take a little bit of practice, you can expand out to do, you know, tons of different colors. Okay. And we'll just keep dotting along. This is a fun pattern. Now I'm up to the, the uh, smallest crochet hook in my set. And you can see that one of my little holes is filled in. I'll just go in with a little tool and open that hole back up. Yep, there we go. It's simple. And that way you can see how the paint kind of fills in the, the hole and I don't have a, a different color showing there. So we're just going to go in and continue dotting until we have the piece filled in. Okay. And that's our first piece. Now here's our second piece. I don't really need marks for this one because this is just a random dot. So I'm taking my smallest um, uh, hook in my crochet hook set and just putting my big dots on in each of the colors and just randomly placing them. Sometimes I go off the edge. Uh, sometimes I go over the hole, but I'm just getting some base dots down um, to get, start getting some color down. And then I'll start um, using different size tools to make different size dots. You can see there I'm using that, um, that drill bit. And I've sped this up, of course, and just using my nail daughters to go ahead and add fill in dots. And we just keep filling that in with different sizes. Sometimes I um, do uh, tap the dot, uh, the tool more than once to just drop off a little less paint and get a smaller size dot. I've gone down to a different size of tool to start filling in. And I'm just randomly placing each of the colors of paint. And you can do as much of this, you know, cover as much of the surface as you like. I'm going to cover quite a bit of it, but there's still uh, quite a bit of uh, black for the contrast showing. Can't get easier dotting than this one. And that's that piece. And now I've got two pieces done. Now this one's going to be a little more traditional. Um, I'm going to actually do some walking the dot. So I've got my center dot and then I'm placing my four orientation for the, you know, making the cross. Um, and that just helps you line up your dots a little bit better. And then I'll fill that around. So I've got a total of eight dots around. And then I'm going in with my next row. And you can see that I'm just choosing a size of nail dotter that I think fits um, with the size of the previous row. Using that um, drill bit to make a little larger dot. And then I will use my nail dotter and I'll just walk some dots around. This is so small, my hand's a little bit in the way. I'm sorry about that, but um, this is really teeny tiny. So in my uh, usual method, I like to go around one side. Okay. 
and then I dot again in the center and go around the other side. I didn't th don't think I mentioned, but of course I'm using the chalk pencil, um, the water soluble uh, General's chalk pencil that will come off easily as I continue on to make these dots. So I'm adding my next row, just alternating the pink and the red. And I'm alternating the, uh, when I walk the dots, I'm alternating the opposite color. And now I'm walking around with red. Isn't this fun to try this micro dotting? It's so teeny tiny. Um, but I really like having the kind of miniature, the miniature look. This would be a great um, present if you have a granddaughter or a daughter or friend that you want to give a sweet little necklace to. I think it's really pretty and it's an easy way to start kind of building up um, your jewelry making um, techniques if you're not overly familiar with that. I do have another kind of quick video that I'm going to put up a little bit later that I'll show you for those of you that don't have like drills or don't want to get into drilling. Um, I'll show you an alternate way to add a bale. Um, and so you'll have an option to try something like that if you don't want to, um, you know, get the, the drills. And then I'll just keep walking the dots and I'm just going to fill out the um, surface of the pendant of the little heart. gets a little tricky to try to hold it towards the end here um, if you have a little tweezers or something now one thing I'm off the edge on some of these um, which is exactly what I want but makes it a little hard sometimes to dot you'll see at that very bait bottom one I'm going to go back and fix that because I didn't like the way that turned out um, but you're just simulating as though you were you had a full like little design element there and I'll just go in and continue to add until I'm all the way off the edge. You could stop anywhere you wanted if you wanted to have a little black space, uh, negative space around that, and you didn't want to go out all the, all the way out to the edge. You don't have to do that, of course. I like going, kind of going off the edge. You'll notice that I tapped some of my paint off on my work surface, and I work on a tile because uh, that's a really easy cleanup for me. I tapped a little to just get that excess paint off, so simulated walking the dots. I made a little booby there, a little boo-boo, so I'm having to go in, back in with the red paint and just kind of cover that up. Now I'm adding my edge element here and I'll do a teeny little bit of dots around um, those last pieces. I'm going down to the bottom to fix that and all I did was just kind of go all the way around. Now let's put it together. Um, one thing I want to say is I did varnish each one of these pieces with several coats of varathane gloss. I use um, poly varathane polyurethane which I just get at like the hardware store and um, these wolf tools are the jewelry making tools that I like to use. They're very sturdy and they're nice um, for a getting started set. So I've got a large nine millimeter jump ring and then a little, I don't know, four or six millimeter jump ring to um, put it in the center. If you had a bigger jump ring, you could leave that, that middle one out and just um, join them together with a larger jump ring if you liked, if you preferred that. And there's the main component of your piece. Isn't that sweet? You can mix and match those, by the way, if you wanted to mix up um, how you have um, staged sort of the, the hearts there. Now I'm going to measure because I want about an 18 inch necklace. So I'm going to measure the clasp. That's about one and a half. And then five inches is the size for the um, for the main piece. And I've just measured my chain and uh, cut off some chain um, to length. And now I'm adding the last jump rings. I've already added the clasp. If you want to see some little more basic um, jewelry making just techniques where I just focus on jewelry making, let me know. And um, I'll do a little bit more about, you know, building the clasp and building the overall necklace. And that's it. There's your sweet little necklace for Valentine's Day. It makes a great gift or for yourself. I think it turned out really great. And I really love the micro dotting. It's so much fun to do the miniature. Here's some close ups on the pieces. That's the spiral. Here's the random dots. And then here's the little mandala dot piece.
and they all came together. I think really beautifully. It's a really sweet little necklace. I think it turned out great. I hope you enjoyed this video. I want to thank you for watching. As always, I appreciate you. Please um, subscribe, leave me a thumbs up, leave me a comment. I really love hearing from you. I'd love to hear what other kinds of videos you're interested in seeing. Thanks for joining me in my studio today. Take care.